Hey, it's Darren Mitchell. I am super excited to be presenting at the Real Estate Investor Summit in Calgary, February 15th to 18th. Amazing line of speakers. We've got Michelle Romano from Dragon's Den. We've got Investor Mel and Dave. We've got Ken Dunn, Ultimate Fundraiser Guy. Simon, the Condo King. We're going to show you how to get started on your real estate journey or experience people. We're going to show you vetted deals, and we're going to show you how to invest passively. Buy your tickets for the Real Estate Investor Summit now. You do not want to miss this episode. We're going to talk about one of the coolest parts of the Nelson Nash book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Page 48 and 49 refers to expanding your system to accommodate all income. We're going to expand our infinite banking system to accommodate all of our income. It's really cool. Let's start. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Control and Compound. I'm your host, Darren Mitchell, and joining me is Christina Wyatt. Christina, how are you doing today? Hi, Darren. I'm doing great. Excited to uh, go through another uh, chapter of Nelson Nash. This one is definitely a, it's a good one. It's a thinker, right? Can we do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm excited about this one. This this, this is, a, I, I've taken some twists and turns through the years on my, my opinion of this, but uh, yeah, pretty excited about it. So before we get started, though, I do want to remind everybody, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, make sure you subscribe and leave that five-star review. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. And don't forget to follow us on social media, at Control and Compound on Instagram and TikTok. So we're referring to the Becoming Your Own Banker book by Nelson Nash. And uh, I, I remember the, the first time I read it years ago. And I was like, this is cool. This is so awesome. This is amazing. And then I got to this part and I was like, ah, right. He he went a little too far now. This is this is now getting into the crazy town. Um, and then, you know, the next time I read it, I was like, well, I mean, that's, you know, and then through the years and and you know, it took me a long time to to really grasp what 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 Nelson went meant by this. So I'll read you the line because this is a, this is a line that shook me. Page forty of the Nelson Nash book: Premiums and income should match. Let's start with a very basic fact: Doesn't all your money go through someone else's bank? And and of course the answer is yes. Your 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 paycheck every every week or two weeks goes into someone else's bank. Grandma's Christmas money when you're a kid, bonuses, commissions, they all flow into someone else's bank. So. So let me ask you a question, Christina. Uh, do you think the president of BMO, the CEO, top guy, the top dog of, of BMO, deposits money into the Royal Bank? I'm going to go with no. I can't imagine why he wouldn't uh, use his own bank, right? Why wouldn't he use his own bank? Yeah, exactly. Why Why wouldn't he just put it in the bank that he, you know, is the C CEO of? And yet we do that every single day, right? We 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 have banks, right? We have these cash value life insurance policies that we 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 use to become our own banker. And what do we do? We deposit money into banks left and right. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to picture though. But in reality, like you said, we do it every day with our with a regular bank account. So why couldn't we just take that concept with our with our policies and have them be our bank? So it flows through there first. It hits that account first. Now, a question that people might think, you know, is well, will the insurance companies even allow this? Can we can we do this? Can we set it up so that all of our income is flowing through these policies? Um, and I thought about that too. You know, going back and looking at you know previous policies and stuff. And the answer is yes. Like we definitely could. There's no reason why we couldn't, right? Especially if we set ourselves up for success in the early years. Um, we use term policies for conversions. We, you know, we, we put a strategy in place that we know that this is the goal and what we want to achieve and you can definitely do it. So yes, I, I believe that we could, you know, and you can um, set this up, even though it sounds like a pretty big idea. Um, so talking about this though, it's, it's kind of confusing when you think of it, like how is this all going to work? And Darren, I know that you're really good at explaining things. So um, could you kind of break it down how, how this would work? How would we be able to set this up or why really, why would we want to set this up at all? Yeah, I mean, you're you're bang on. Like, you're you're not going to be able to set this up day one. This would be like many many years of you planning to do this. And you know, this is coming from a guy that has nine of these policies, putting significant amounts of money in. Because every one I bought was like, well, this probably would be enough. I'd probably don't won't need any more after that. And then it was more and more. And then you know, I stopped saying that after my sixth or seventh policy. I was like. You know, maybe this won't be the last one. Of course, I want another one. If you have extra money, you got to park it somewhere. So I'm going to give an example, and it's just going to be 
a big picture example. Don't beat me up on the numbers. I'm not going to get into taxes. I'm not going to get into you can only borrow 90% instead of 100%. Just conceptually, I want to help people understand really what we're talking about. So I want to start with an existing policy. And let's say there's $100,000 of cash value in that policy. And there's an existing loan of $20,000. So the, the, the way I, I, I want you to picture this is, remember mom and dad's fridge when you grew up or grandma and grandpa's fridge? The old, the old fridges that lasted forever and didn't break down. You had a little freezer on the top, okay? And then you had the fridge on the bottom. Simple, great fridge. So picture that fridge with fridge and freezer unit. The freezer, the top part, the small part, is the $20,000 policy loan. And the fridge is the $80,000. So together, that's $100,000 cash value. So this couple, we're going to assume this family has $10,000 a month in expenses. And they have $15,000 a month in income. And they're going to flow all of their income and all their expenses through the policy. So how would that work? So let's start with the expenses. Okay, so you've got $10,000 of expenses. First thing you're going to do is you're going to borrow against that cash value to pay all your monthly expenses. So if you go back to the fridge now, instead of 20 on the freezer and 80 on the fridge, cash value at the bottom, loan at the top, now we're going to have $30,000 on the freezer compartment and $70,000 at the bottom. So you have less access to cash now because we borrowed against it. Remember, you still have the same cash value. Your cash value remains the same, whether you have a loan or not, but your available cash is now 70 instead of 80 and your, your loan is 30. But then you get paid and we're gonna assume a monthly income here. You get paid this $15,000 and you deposit the full $15,000 or the entire paycheck into the policy. Well, what happens to our little fridge analogy now? Well, now the freezer part, we were 30 and we just put in 15. The, the loan was 30. We put in 15. Now we have a $15,000 loan and an $85,000 cash value at, at the bottom. Okay. So our loans got smaller. We do the same thing the next month. Pretty soon we're going to have a 10,000. Well, the next month we have a $10,000 um, loan and a $90,000 cash value. And then say we have a horrendous month. We only make six grand that year or that month. No problem. We can borrow from a cash value. We have we have set up a banking system that we can access. Or what happens if we make 20 grand that month? Where are we going to put that extra money? We're going to put it in our own bank instead of someone else's. So we put that in. So you're going to reach a point fairly quickly for a lot of people where now this policy is full. And it's like, oh, well, I don't have an outstanding loan to pay off. I've already maxed out the amount of premiums that can go into this policy. I have an extra five grand um, a month now. What do I do with that extra five grand a month, Christina? Well, that would be when we start the new policy, right? We've, we're all maxed out and, and our goal is to max these out. So you've hit your goal. Now you're moving on to your next one. And who stops once they finish that first goal? No one, right? You continue on, you set up that next policy. Exactly. So, so Christina, say we start a new policy at $5,000 a month. They, what have we done with that? What does it, what does that do? Well, we've expanded the system, right? We've expanded the system um, to accommodate more money. So we've started the new policy. Now it's not all of it. We don't have all of our income going in there just yet, but we're one step closer to having all of our income flow through that policy first. And at the end of the day, that's the goal, right? Like our bank, this is our bank. If we have it, you know, the money flow through here first, then go out to where it needs to go and come back. We've really created something more. It's not just like our money flowing through our regular bank bank account at the end of the day, what's left? Nothing, right? Well, at the end of the day with this one, we now have a cash, a high cash value policy that we can have access to in retirement, all tax-free. We've got that tax-free growth that's been happening behind the scenes this entire time. We've got a death benefit for our family, either early years if something were to happen, heaven forbid, and our families needed it, or later years, we've created a massive estate value as well, right? So um, we're just, and we always say it, right? We're just making our bank account better. And the reason we'd want more is because as our income grows, as we, you know, we need to finance new things, we need to do new things, we need to start these new accounts to accommodate that growth in income and to accommodate our banking needs. Just like if, you know, we'd have, we'd have to increase limits, the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. It reminds me, uh, you know, oftentimes we're meeting uh, new clients and they're like, 
you know, 10 years away from retirement, which is, you know, a great time to start a, start a policy. But they're like, well, I'm just going to contribute for, for the 10 years. And we're like, okay, but let's, let's give you the option to continue to con- contribute. We'll just put that down that you have the option. And they're like, well, okay, but I'm not going to need it. And then sure enough, 10 years from now, even if they're retired, do they still get money, money that comes in every month? Do they still have to put it somewhere? And, and the policy is so efficient at that point. Would you rather put it in your own bank that's super efficient, growing tax-free, does all those things Christina just mentioned? Or would you rather park it in, you know, your local bank earning 0% interest just sitting there? So, again, people continue continue to, to contribute these past what they think they will. But let's go back to that $5,000 policy. So I ran, I ran an illustration on a 40-year-old and said, okay, so let's say we just... I did added one more policy, right? And, you know, again, people have eight, 10, 12, 20 policies. Uh, Nelson had, I think, 46 at one point. So as you add, po- add policies, it's going to grow your system. But what, what does that do long term for you? So on a $5,000 a month policy in a 40 year old, let's say in year 10, an amazing opportunity comes along. The stock market crashes 40%, real estate drops 35%, Bitcoin has a dip, your neighbors, died and they're selling the house for a song. I don't care what the amazing opportunity is. The deal of a lifetime happens. Well, that policy, you're going to have somewhere between $650,000 and $750,000 of cash value by year 10. So now you have a perfect place to access that money to go take advantage of this opportunity. Or let's say a financial emergency happens. Let's say you're devastated financially or you you have a stroke or a heart attack and you can't work for the next year. What are you going to do? Well, you've got six fifty, seven hundred and fifty thousand of cash value to access. So you're you're in a much safer place. Then we fast forward. Well, what's this cash value going to be like when you're in your retirement years? You you could borrow from this somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars a month by the age by age seventy. So at age seventy, if you wanted to take a tax free retirement income, you could get somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars per month. So that's 240 to 360 a year on this $5,000 a month policy, assuming it was paid from 40 to 60. So ability to add an additional policy increases your safety, increases your opportunities, increases your chances of being able to borrow, multiply your dollars and make way more money doing something else. It creates a legacy for your family. It allows them to keep the business or the rental properties because of the estate benefit, estate equalization and a boatload of tax-free retirement for you. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, oh, I'm adding another policy. What can that additional policy do for you in the long term? And it's a lot. Yeah. And I think adding it, I think adding the policies as well, kind of, you can dip your feet in without going all the way in. Right. So another great example that Nelson gives is, you know, using it for specific things, which I think is really helpful to people. We talk a lot about, um, you know, your savings growing and, uh, more income coming in and stuff, but maybe people are thinking, well, I don't, I'm not saving a lot right now. I'm putting everything into my business. Um, I'm putting everything into this or that something else. I can't put it into the policy first, but the, like the beauty behind this is you can do both. So as a real life example, um, I know people, it makes more sense when you use real life examples, think of a farmer. So if you're working with a farmer, and they say, yeah, this is great, but all of my money goes into um, purchasing my animals, my feed, all that at the beginning of the year. Um, and then all my cash comes in at the end of the year. And then I kind of do it all over again. Well, wouldn't it make more sense to take that, it, that cash before we go and purchase the animals, we put it through the policy first, the farm puts it through the policy first, then they go do that purchase, just like they would if they were doing a regular bank, it hit the bank first, then they'd go do the purchase. And then at the time of the sale, you know, their higher peak season, when they're making all their income, they turn around, they pay it off, rinse and repeat, do it all again. So they've picked a large expense that's going through the business anyways, and now they're flowing it through that way. So it, it gives you the ability to create a policy or maybe start a policy when you would, when you might not have thought you could have, right? Because there's lots of expenses like that that are out there where we're keeping that money inside the bank account because we know we need it and it's doing absolutely nothing for us, right? It's just sitting there waiting for that next expense that we need to pay. No, oh, Christina, I, I absolutely love farmers. Um, but let's look at business owners too. Business owners are another, not, another example, you know, farm seasonal. Sure. Everyone gets that. 
you know, they, they, they sell the crops in the, in the, in the, in the fall, they get their money, they fund their policies and they start taking loans out in the summer to, to fund up buying their crops or, or the animals, whatever they're doing, whatever, whatever kind of farm they are. But every business is seasonal. I mean, your retail stores, you know, they're busy at Christmas, your construction companies are big, busy in the summer. Even our business, Christina, like we, we, we have busy times of the year and slow times of the year. People don't really want to talk about their finances in the middle of August, but they really want to talk about them in, in, in the fall and the spring and January. So every business is seasonal. So you think of it from a business owner's perspective. They tend to be sitting on a bunch of cash because they're worried about those down, you know, the winter's coming, right? They're worried about the winter coming. They're worried about those down times and they're just sitting on cash. So what are they looking for? Why don't they invest that money? Well, business owners need liquidity, use, and control of their money. They don't want to put it in the stock market and the stock market drops 40%. And then when they need money in a bad quarter, access it down 40%. So they end up sitting, sitting in cash. And businesses will sit in, you know, cash balance. Like lots of businesses will have six figures or more or seven figures for some businesses sitting in cash for those, you know, emergencies and opportunities. Well, picture that sitting in cash for a 15, 20 year period. You take our $5,000 a month policy and just multiply that by many, many times over. Think of those, those cash balances were sitting inside policies, high cash value policies as part of an inf the infinite banking concept. That business would grow significant wealth inside those policies, tax-free growth. When they needed the money, they could ask, ac access them. When the market crashed, when all this happened, they could access them. Or when does a bank want to loan you money when you don't need it? When do you want to borrow money when you need it? No financials given. You're not asking the bank for money. You're borrowing from your own bank. So it does an incredible amount to set the business up for success. And then the business owner for a tax-free retirement and incredible legacy planning. Uh, you know, it's just an incredible, credible product for business owners and, and, and real estate people, farmers, you name it. And Christina, you know, we keep talking about it, but what's the biggest expense for most people? You know, hint, it's also the number one wealth destroyer. What's the biggest expense for most people in businesses? Taxes. Tax. Always taxes. Yeah. So like tax is a great one, eh? Why wouldn't you, you've got to hold on to that money, make those installments anyways. Wouldn't it make more sense to run them through the policy first, turn around and pull it out and uh, pay that tax bill? And a lot of business owners are doing this, right? They're doing it anyways. So my, why not make it more efficient, which is what we talk about all the time. If you could be more efficient when it comes to paying taxes, would you want to be? Absolutely. And this is one way to be able to do it. Yeah. And I mean, it's not going to work for everybody on the taxes. People that are T4 employees and have to pay their taxes on their paycheck. Great. We, we understand that. But a lot of business owners pay their pay uh, quarterly installments and to flow that money through a policy and then borrow it back out. It's just money in, money out. But you look at the long term effect on the compound curve where that's going to put you 20 years down the road. Maybe it's just an additional five thousand dollar a month policy. Well, wow, we already saw what kind of impact that would have. So. You know, to wrap up here, remember uh, remember the name of Nelson's book, right? It's Becoming Your Own Banker. It's not buy one insurance product and then you're done, right? It's becoming, it's a process. You're going to go through this. So I encourage you, all of you to, to incorporate more policies uh, in, into it. And I encourage you, if you're going to get into this multiple policies, you're really going to be careful of, of, of Make, to make sure you're dealing with someone who's an expert at this, like one of our wealth coaches. You know, there's, there's others too, but, you know, this, this is where to get approvals from the insurance companies, to be able to set it up, to get approvals, to be able to put it in, be able to structure it, to be able to track those loans, to be able to, to keep, uh, keep people, you know, just aware of what's going on all the time with their policies. Because if you start having multiple, multiple policies, money flowing in and flowing out, you got to deal with an expert. So I encourage you to talk to one of our wealth coaches uh, to learn more about how to expand your, your system to accommodate more money. Maybe eventually a nice goal of all your money, but at least more money for now. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to this podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. And if you want more information, check out our website, controlandcompound.com, and you can sign up for an education session with one of our wealth coaches.